Okay, on the next um, part of the show now, we've got my next special guest on today's show. Our discussion is food provenance and what we really know about it. Joining me on the studio hotline, we have Chef James Goldin, who is a group chef director at the Pick Hotel Group and worked under many recognisable hotel restaurants around the world and chief ambassador to Maple in Canada. Hi, James. Good to have you on the programme. Hi, great to be here. Thanks for having me on. You're welcome. And on the introduction to my uh, segment uh, a little discussion i mentioned food provenance and uh, what oh. is what is provenance that's the first time i have um, come come across that term and perhaps most of my listeners as well so it, it's basically a, an understanding of, of of where your food comes from and and how it's how it's made and produced and grown and um so so i think i think uh maple from canada have basically done research to say that um a, a large proportion of people are interested in the sustainability and, and the provenance of their food but perhaps don't know how to find out you know more information and and to fully understand how to make an educated choice when when buying food okay uh, so it is knowing and pinpointing where our produce food comes from the origin yeah, and I think you know it's it's, it's quite a tricky minefield. I think you know for, for a lot of consumers, and I think it's it's uh, it's one of those one of those things where you know we, we, we all we all want to kind of understand the whole process. And I think you know with the amount of uh, interest recently on television and, and and stuff like that of 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 inside sort of documentaries on food production, I think people are becoming more and more interested in in you know how to make those those choices yes uh finding out where the motions of what's uh on our plate basically what it has yeah. to go through right a few examples here pig's blood is the main ingredient for black pudding and that maple syrup comes from the tree itself with one in four people think it's made from bark a few kind of uh, poles there um recently surveyed Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's it's quite interesting, really, because, you know, black pudding is one of those things that as a chef, you just sort of assume everybody knows that. And, um, you know, it, it's it's quite interesting to hear those sort of stats. I mean, you know, I, I can sort of sympathize a little bit with maple syrup, although, you know, maple syrup is just one of those incredible things that, that you know, one of those incredible gifts from nature. I mean, um, you know, a lot of, not a lot of people know, but obviously, you know, the, the maple syrup comes from the sap of the tree and it's it's an incredibly sustainable uh, products and um it's actually part of of uh, of, of a, a law that they have out in canada that, that actually prevents the trees from getting cut down or any form of sort of deforestation from 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 that so you know the whole sort of um you know maple thing it, it goes far deeper than yeah. just that delicious stuff that you put on your waffles yes because you know? I, I only seem to use um syrup you know on pancake day but uh, syrup is yeah. actually a good substitute for sugar Hundred percent. I mean, well, I've got friends that are doing the whole no, you know, no refined sugar month, and and I've got vegan friends that don't eat honey. And all I say is, you know, try try maple syrup. I mean, it's got you know incredible antioxidants and the minerals that are in there. It's a fantastic alternative. And uh, on to my next um, kind of um, topic, I'm going to discuss about uh, healthier foods and not so healthier foods. Could one of the reasons yeah. p people eat unhealthy is because um, and healthier foods are less pricier than organic foods, uh, much more convenient to prepare as well. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, I think it's, you know, time is one of the things that as humans we seem to always have a lack of. And I think that it's, it's you know, it's convenience, isn't it? I think a lot of people end up going to supermarkets and just sort of putting stuff into their basket without fully understanding, mm. you know, what it is. And I, and I think, you know, it's that the foods that tend to be worse for you tend to be a lot easier mm. to. to and, and I think, you know, as as people, you know, sometimes it's just quicker to whack something in the microwave or to order a, a takeaway or something like that than rather than actually spend a bit of time. But I think, you know, it's a great way to bring people together. Mm. And, and if, if people can take a bit more of an interest in the providence and, and where their food yeah. comes from, they'll find that their families in turn will also, you know, want to take an interest and it actually becomes a good talking point and brings the families together. Yes, you know, and I think it's and, an important thing. And cooking, uh, preparing a meal can have therapeutic advantages as well as uh, improving your culinary skills. 100%, 100%. And, you know, you are what you eat. So, mm -hmm. you know, if, if you, if, if you, if, if you um, understand what you put in your body and you know that that product's been reared or grown or produced with love, then 
it's you know it's another talking point i mean i've, I've been talking to friends who say oh you know i got this amazing you know stuff from the supermarket and i cooked it up for a dinner party and i think well if you could also tell your guests where it came from and talk a bit about how it was made i mean it's just a fantastic little sort of story for, for any well when we're allowed dinner parties sorry i mean we are in lockdown yeah but um you know, <laughs> not to worry and um <laughs> few more uh, stats here uh, on my notes. Over half of us, 56%, would consider changing our eating habits to help the health of the planet. But just one in six people, 15%, have done anything about it. That's quite intriguing data. Yeah, I think... I think it's a tricky one that because I, I think it also comes down to the fact that maybe people don't necessarily know how to make that impact. I mean, you know, you, you read a lot about um, eating less meat and, you know, all those sort of different impacts but i think the fact is is that we maybe we just need to eat a more varied diet mm. and i you know i'm a believer you know i don't eat meat every day i'm not a vegan or vegetarian i i eat you know as as i as i feel is good for my body and i think you know there's there, there should be some days where we focus a bit more on on simple sort of lighter meals rather than trying to sort of have a you know a piece of fish or a piece of meat or whatever it is every night i think that's that's possibly something for people to look at yeah sure and uh, with more people having more times on their hands would you recommend uh, to people to grow their grow your own vegetables absolutely i mean at the pig we we have a wall kitchen garden at every single um hotel and that's what we promote you know we want people to understand that something that's grown you know on their doorstep or in their garden it's going, to t it's going to taste so much better than something that's been sat in a warehouse for, for months or in a plastic bag sat on a shelf. So, you know, if, if you do have the space or if you even if you don't have the space, you know, a little sort of seed tray on a windowsill with some salad in it is, is far better than those bags of slimy stuff you get in the supermarket that sits at the bottom of your fridge for, for days on end. And um, that said, uh, one in two people have attempted to grow their uh, own food. Uh, with 20% using a windowsill. Brilliant. That's I remember, amazing. Yeah. You know, that's, that's encouraging, isn't it? I remember like, my granddad, he used to grow his own uh, um, tomato plants, just put it on the windowsill and then, hey, presto, yeah. got tomatoes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's right. I mean, allotments of, you know, the, I think the allotment waiting lists have almost trebled over the course of uh, this past year. So obviously people want to grow more veg. That's, that's encouraging. Um, yeah. And also... Do you find this encouraging that um, well-known food restaurants are attempting to put more healthier nutritional options on the menu, especially for the younger generations? Yeah, I think that, you know, back in the day, you'd always have that, um, you know, that sort of vegetarian menu that used to sit at the back of the drawer somewhere on the way to the station. Whereas now, you know, even at the Pig, we're, we're bringing, you know, plant-based food into into the limelight and it sits you know in pride of place on the main menu and i think it's you know it i think younger people we're not even younger people but i think people in general are, are trying to be more healthy you know more people are going to the gym or they were you know before lockdown mm -hmm. and i think you know we're just a bit more sort of conscious of what it is we're eating and i think that you know as as restaurants we need to kind of diversify and and actually you know embrace these new movements and i believe that you know, plant-based menu is is a fantastic way to eat. I, I I like that sort of dining experience, especially at lunchtime. Of course, it's, it's good. And yeah. just on final note, um, what are some good easy to make winter warmers? Uh, stew, homemade soup, to name but a few. Yeah, so well, I've been doing loads of those sort of recipes, but I've I've actually just done a few recipes uh, for the Maple from Canada website. So on maplefromcanada.co.uk, I've done a, a venison dish which. I absolutely love game this time of year. It's a fantastic, sustainable protein. And um, and I've, I've done a dish which serves it with uh, a, a butter roasted uh, winter squash. And then I've also dressed that with a maple vinegar and slow dressing. So you get that lovely sweet, sweet and sour sort of dressing with the, the gamey venison and then that lovely earthy uh, sweetness of the squash. So that's that's a recipe that I would say everybody should cook on a freezing cold winter's evening. Sounds nice Delicious. just thinking about it. And uh, you probably get our listeners uh, cooking in the kitchen now. Brilliant. That'd be great. And uh, that. Chef James Golding, I just want to say it's been a delight to have you on the programme. Thanks for having me. It's Thank been you. Great to You're be welcome. Here. All the best. And you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.